hello, my name is Mac. First of all, I'd just like to apologize that uh, Joshua can't make it today. Um, so I'll take you through uh, the project that we did together at um, CIID in Denmark, which is the Copenhagen Institute of Interaction Design. And um, it was, a, it was a, pro a project that we did um, in collaboration with uh, Urban Scale, with Mayo and um, Adam Greenfield. Um, and first, I just want to take you through a little bit the, the area which we were inspired by in covering. Um, when we started this project, we were very, we, well, we took a walk around in the city, and we were very inspired, but also um, sort of semi-confused by these mysterious boxes, which seem to be put up all over cities these days. Um, and we, we found ourselves asking these questions. Um, what is this? What does it detect? Um, how long has it been there? Who put it here? Um, why is it here? And the most important thing that we came to and started asking ourselves more and more is what, is it, what does it actually mean, the, the, the data that this thing collects? Um, and we were also very inspired by a kind of a classic now. And I come from actually come from the UK, so where I was born and uh, oh, sorry, where I was raised. And uh, this this plaque, this uh, sign is a is a fire hydrant sign, which indicates that there's a fire hydrant nearby. Um, and it's very basic, just a big H, the hydrant, and uh, has two numbers. The top number being um, the capacity of the pipe, the water pipe and the bo bottom number being exactly where it is away from the sign, how, how far it is, in foot or in meters, sometimes it varies. And we were inspired by this because in a way this is identifying to somebody who doesn't know that there's a fire hydrant there or doesn't know that there's a big round metal uh, block in the ground. Um, it's identifying to them what it is and the capabilities of that, um, that fire hydrant. So the pro our project Urban ISO is really uh, for us, it's a human and computer readable standard that we developed um, to describe and allow access to the, these urban centers or these mysterious boxes. Human in the sense that we wanted people to understand what was there and, um, and uh, in a way why it was there and also who was responsible for it. Um, and computer in a way that you would actually start to um, understand the real meaning of that uh, mysterious box and what it measures. And I'll go into a little bit more detail with that. So this is basically what we developed. Um, it's a very simple graphic plaque, very similar to the, the plaque that I showed you in the beginning that inspired us. It has two elements. The element on the left um, is just a, uh, an icon signifying what type of sensor it is, um, and also a, a QR code, a, a computer readable code on the top, and some other elements which I'll go into detail uh, in a minute. But uh, on the right-hand side, you can see a more general um, information plaque, which just says what it is, where it is, um, how you can access further data from that point where you're standing, and also an identification code, um, obviously for people who don't have smartphones or things that can read um, uh, the computer vision and uh, this sort of technology that it needs. So going into a little bit more detail about what this pla plaque is, more the graphic uh, anatomy of it, it's got a very simple icon sim signifying the sensor type, like I said. And for us, it was important to, uh, to not only think about what were the natural elements that you would want to measure within a city context, but also the, the sort of unnatural city elements, like the traffic and communication, noise. And then, obviously, the last one being us, like um, human beings. We are a fairly uh, uh, busy element these days in, in cities. Um, so we, we really found it. Uh, uh, important to try to categorize these things into a very easily identifiable, color-coded um, graphic language so people could identify it from some way away. The, uh, the QR code, like I mentioned, uh, is situated on the top. It's a color QR code. And essentially, it is a, it's an address. It's a, it's a URL to, a, to either a website or an or a, a entry in a database within an application for a phone. Um, and it basically takes you to uh, an, a more detailed information page, um, which gives you um, the ability to store that information on your phone, um, register more, um, register for updates at a later stage away from the location of the, the sensor, um, and also uh, the ability to connect with others. But I'll, again, I'll, I'll go into that in a bit more detail. And lastly, just some, some, some things which really we were inspired also by the, again, the H that um, when you're standing in a point where you know there's a sensor, it's important to know where it is. 
obviously. And it's not, unlike a fire hydrant, it's, a fire hydrant is, is normally on the floor uh, or sometimes on the wall. But these sensors are sometimes high up in the sky or they're hanging from buildings or something. So we, we really found it important to, 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 to allow you to locate the sensor in an X in an XYZ axis, so this is what this is in, on the, on the right-hand side. And then on the left-hand side, we have um, read, um, the degree of openness of this sensor, which uh, is an interesting discussion and debate that we had about whether you, sh whether you should actually make all sensors open or, or whatever, but it's something that we t took a step back from and just decided, well, it's up to the owner of the sensor to, to, to initiate or to tell you whether this sensor is open, and it should be very clearly visible on the, on the plaque. So again, this is just a bit more, this is, this is information for you to start to identify what this is and who, and, and why it's there, and to start to bring a little bit of meaning. But going into a bit more about the meaning side of what I mentioned in the beginning, since, since these plaques mark sensors around the city, we, we designed and prototyped a, a, a smartphone app um, that could access that um, information of the center. And like I said, it also gives you extra information. So if urban explorers like, uh, like we, me and Josh, uh, tend to be more than, uh, than city planners, um, if we encounter these sensors in the city, um, as I said, it's easy just to take a photo and access the sensors data page. Um, or as I said, look up uh, later using a unique, the unique ID. Because through our prototyping, we found it quite, uh, quite a problem for if you, if you decide to well, for example, if you don't have a smartphone, then it's, it's, or, for example, if you don't want to access at that, very, that point in time, because the interaction between you having, having to get your phone out and having to take a picture and, and waiting for a signal or something is, is quite, uh, is something that still needs to be sort of uh, addressed in a lot of cities these days with uh, uh, Wi-Fi and 3G reception, but having something there which is accessible later actually started to become quite useful. And just to finally finish off a little bit before lunch, I'm sure everyone's hungry, the, a little bit more of the anatomy of the app. As I said, it goes into more uh, detail about the data, the history, the, what actually is this center, atmospheric center, what it measures, more technical information to give a broad scope for people with a variety of interests, um, from people who are maintaining these sensors to people who would just be wandering by and interested in seeing what it is. Again, even more detail. Why is it there? Who is responsible for it? How can I get in contact with the person who is responsible for it? Um, how can I request information from that sent extra information that's not already there? How can I ask why is it closed, for example? Um, and a bit more about the hardware, exactly what it is inside this box. And finally, I just want to finish off on the last part of the app is, for us, the most important, I think. It's really starting to connect um, connect people together so that they can start to understand what other people are doing with that data. So this is a very simple uh, screen where people can post projects that they're doing related to the data stream that's coming from that sensor. And you can uh, tap and go in and see detail about what it is they're doing. So for example, we have some examples, uh, uh, people teaching at CID with the data, or um, research being done by the Danish government, or um, even thinking about the media and how investigative journalism is now becoming very, very focused on data and the use of data to, to, uh, to provide news stories. Um, and for us, this was really the moment when we thought this is starting to link uh, into that question, what is the real meaning of this data? Allowing people to see what others are doing and interpreting and what others, how others are interpreting the data in their own way so that they can start to discuss between each other exactly what it means to them. So just to sum up, we see it as a, an open data commons. And again, going to this whole discussion about open data, for us it's very important that this becomes a tool to strive towards allowing governments and businesses to open uh, their sensors that they have in the city for cities, businesses, uh, residents, and also designers. So thank you very much.